Hi, today we've got to carry on from where we left off last week. I'll put a link to last week's video in the description underneath this video. We were talking about making the decision between going to Sony completely or whether I'm going to continue as an Olympus user or OM Digital Solutions user. I've had the one uh, Sony camera body, the A1 and one lens for 10, 11 months now. Most of my gear is still Olympus. It's very difficult to use the two systems side by side. Modern cameras are very complicated and you're never going to become familiar with one camera when you're trying to use the two different systems. So I'm very keen to go back to just using one system. I've been stuck in this situation of using the two because the autofocus on the Sony A1 is just so good. Whereas the bird eye tracking on the Olympus M1X for birds in flight is hopeless. It's a non-starter. doesn't even begin to autofocus on a flying bird. The Sony can be, well, almost 100% success rate with flying birds at times. It's absolutely wonderful. Now, there's only two things I'm interested in in this new OM-1 camera, and that's no blackout in the viewfinder. And that's a given because it tells us that in the press release. So that's, that's OK. I've got that. And then secondly, whether the autofocus is in the same ballpark as the Sony. If it is, then I'm more likely to go down the Olympus route. I didn't want to start discussing all the other pros and cons of both systems. They're, there's a long list and they've both got their advantages and disadvantages. I'm just interested in those two features, no blackout, autofocus being as good. And the thing that least interests me is image quality because I'm very happy with the image quality I'm getting from the Micro Four Thirds. I can't tell them apart when I'm processing the pictures. I'm not aware of which is which. And I wasn't when I swapped from Canon to Olympus. I did my test there and I was quite happy with the quality. And then I just I loaded 10 pictures up onto a web page and invited people to go and have a look and see if they could tell which ones were taken with the Sony and which with the Olympus. So today we're just finishing that off. I'll give you the results. I'll put these in the description under the video as well. So you haven't got to come back to the video to look at it. But the Sony pictures were taken with the pictures have all got letters. So it's B, E, F, G and H. Now, as of Wednesday evening, which is when I the last time I've got to look at it, because it's now Thursday, I'm filming and editing this film on a Thursday. Friday's tied up. So as of Wednesday evening, there were 1,224 people went to the website to look. There were 173 comments under the YouTube video. There were 39 people had a go at saying which picture was taken with which camera. And amazingly, six of them got it right. That's very impressive. I thought it would be zero. So I'm very, very impressed that six of you can get it right. Well done for that. There is actually a way of telling them apart, and that's by color. And the Olympus pictures tend to be slightly cooler. Now, several people did refer to this in the comments. They said they'd been using color as the guidance. Whether those were the ones that got it right or not, I don't know. I didn't look that up. Um, but. Um, there is a slight difference. It's very subtle. You've got to look at the pictures side by side. If you look at a picture in isolation, uh, I, I can't tell. But if I look at the thumbnails, I can just about see the difference looking side by side at them. It's a minute difference, but it is there. A couple of people said they tried to do a similar thing, but using depth of field. I, I couldn't do that. I wouldn't be able to see the difference. A lot of people just refer to the fact you couldn't really tell that they, they were pretty well identical. And if I'd have been doing this, if somebody else had set this up and I'd been looking, I'd have just said, I can't tell. We're going to do the same thing now with prints. I've got three people who have volunteered to look at prints of the same files, A3 size prints, just sent them off to a lab all printed at the same time in the, in the same way. And I think it's even more difficult to do with, with prints. And we're very lucky that the first person who's gonna have a go at this for us is the best female wildlife photographer living in this house, namely my wife. Over to you, Ernie. So what you're looking for is which is the sharpest picture, which one has the most detail in it. Doesn't matter about the posture of the bird or the, the perch or the background which looks the sharpest okay create two piles mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you. Olympus 3, Sony 2. Okay, my wife is not a photographer. Definitely a lay person, but sometimes it can be useful to have the opinion of someone who's not an expert, who's just looking at it from a normal eye. The next person I'm going to ask is definitely an expert. Some of you will recognise him as a, for many years, well for decades, he was probably the, the most well-known name in club photography. His full-time job was lecturing and demonstrating uh, to, to camera clubs. Every night of the week he'd be out up and down the country talking to camera clubs. And they used to say, if you want to know what's going on in club photography, look to see what Bob Moore's doing. And when I put in for my associateship of the Royal Photographic Society, followed by my fellowship, it's a good idea to have someone else look at the panel you're thinking of putting in to see what they think. They look at it differently to you do. And there was only one person's opinion that I was interested in. So we're going to go and see him. So there should be five of each. Yeah. And so it's just which ones are the sharpest and the best detail. They're all good quality to me, they're sharp where they need to be sharp. And pure quality sharpness. That's a difficult one. I would say that one's slight, slightly better than that, but I think you're asking me a difficult question. Well, well, well. Well, they're both pretty good, but I would say that one's slightly better than that. Almost impossible to see any difference. But if I if pushed into short, I'd say that one was slightly better than that. Yeah, dear. Because the feather detail is amazing on both of them. I would say, I put, only push them to short because it's ever so difficult. I should say that one's better than that one. Olympus 2, Sony 3. So now we're going to try my friend Peter Priest, who I've done a lot of photography with over the last 20, 30 odd years. On, we work on the same estate, and he's also done a lot of judging and talking to camera clubs. Quality wise, I would say that's the better quality. Okay, so go to pile, and that will be the best one on the left. As you say, you really not can't see much, can you? I think that's the best. I would as well. I'd say the that's top the one. Best. I'd have thought the top yeah, one. Yeah, that's the best one. Yeah. Are these the best ones here, or that one? Yeah, this I one? think that's the best. That's, that's the, the best, best one. Best. That's the best. Yeah. But that's you know really you're splitting hairs, aren't you? I'd say the top one's and better. And they all think it's the best, the best one as well. Olympus Four, Sony One. Well, you can see that they were struggling to tell them apart, and. So for me, just image quality is not the issue and it will be mostly down to that autofocus. Now there's lots of reviews out there on this OM-1. Very hard to tell from any of the reviews. I've, I've got to get hold of the camera myself and try it and, and see how I feel about it. Um, you can't really describe autofocus, you know. I'm pretty sure on my YouTube channel in recent weeks, I've probably used terms like the Sony A1 is so good, it's almost 100% success rate in birds in flight. And I've probably also said, if you can keep it in the viewfinder, it will be in focus. And that's very true. That's how I feel about it. It's a remarkable autofocus system. 
but my success rate with birds in flight has actually now gone down. I'm getting quite a few pictures out of focus now. And that's not because the camera's suddenly got worse. It's because I've become a lot more ambitious on what I can achieve. And I've been doing dippers in flight recently. Before I owned the Sony A1, I wouldn't have even got the camera out of the bag. In fact, the cameras would be sitting in the car. I'd be just doing a recce. The weather conditions were just horrible to be out in. And yet now with the Sony A1, I feel inclined to have a go at doing birds in flight. And it got some pictures sharp, but it got most of them out of focus. But it was an impossible situation. I'll just show you those pictures now. And uh, it was a, the, the reason I was having a go at it is the, dip, the river was flooded. Very strong currents coming down. There was hardly any exposed rocks in the middle of the water. So the dippers were on the edges of the water amongst a lot of debris. It looked awful photographically. And what they were doing, they were flying out from the bank into the middle of the river, landing in this torrent of water coming down, diving, coming back up, flying back to exactly the same perch, because there weren't many perches around, and then flying in again. So it was repetitive, the same flight path maybe six times and then they'd move on. And it's much easier to do a bird in flight when it's a repetitive thing. You don't get it the first time, you might not get it the second time, but you know what's happening now. So the third and the fourth time you stand a chance. But it was a very difficult situation, very high ISOs, very poor light, and just the jungle behind the birds. It was difficult to see the birds when they launched into flight. So not surprising the camera struggled with it, but I'll just show you those pictures just to finish off. This was the sort of thing the bird was doing, sitting on a perch to the side of the river and then launching into flight. I was having to set the ISO to either 16,000 or 20,000, not much difference between the two, to get a shutter speed of either 3,000 hundredths of a second or 4 thousandths of a second. So the light was miserable, very contrasty conditions and just amazed that the camera could lock onto them at any point. Thanks for watching.